Welcome back, everybody, uh, on our series of web, web interviews with local leaders and business experts. Today, we are joined by Andy Cagnet, who is the president of Transworld Business Advisors, which is the largest business brokerage in the world. And so, he, but more than that, he's really active in a lot of local charities. He's the board, chair of the board for United Way of Broward County, in addition to being on the board of a lot of other charities, which is actually how we met on the board at LifeNet for Families. So welcome to the show, Andy. Thank you, thank you for having me on, Jeff. Uh, certainly uh, unique times right now in <laughs> business and in nonprofit. To, 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 to say the least, well, well, we'll talk about the nonprofit. Let's talk about the unique times and what everybody is on everybody's mind with regard to COVID-19 and the impact it's having on business. What are you seeing on your end on the business broker side of things? Well, you know, we deal with a lot of businesses, all different kinds of businesses across the board. And of course, you know, being here in Florida and in some other areas of the United States, uh, you know, anything that's tourist based or anything that's hospitality based, of course, restaurants and, and anything that has to do with travel, those things are really at a complete standstill. I mean, I know there are some restaurants out there that are doing takeout and things like that, but those businesses are just, you know, suffering uh, immensely. And then, and so they, I, they haven't even really started the call yet uh, that they need to sell their business because obviously uh, everybody's kind of just frozen in place. I guess that's the best way to describe it. I would say about 33% of our deals uh, have, uh, there are some businesses that are thriving in this, things that have to do with logistics, things that have to do with uh, supplying, uh, supply chain, things that have to do with uh, supplies for food. Um, those things are thriving. So we have some deals that are continuing, to, uh, continuing. Uh, but you know, across the board, it's just you know, small businesses suffering. Sure, and, and the local businesses, and like you talked about hospitality, unless they're pivoting or able to pivot in an effective way, they're really, really struggling. Even with the pivot, I mean, nobody expected this. This is, this is an unpredictable kind of thing. Are, are you seeing any deals come through the pipeline right now, or is that just everything completely on hold? No, we see some deals coming through the pipeline. We, you know, we sold a, a company that was a, a mail order a cake company that, believe it or not, they're doing very well. Uh, we, we just sold a cleaning janitorial uh, company that's doing extremely well. Uh, you know, there are some businesses that we see. We had a medical supply business. The, the sellers actually put a hold on the uh, sale because I think they're profiting too much from this. So uh, we're seeing deals go across. But like you said, most businesses are not doing well uh, through this. Uh, they're having the pivot. And even those pivots are just kind of short term kind of stop gaps. You know, high end restaurants doing takeout. They're not built for takeout. And certainly, you know, people don't want to pay top price or that, you know, they're using skeleton crews with big kind of uh, rents. I, I think they're just, you know, a lot of people are just waiting on the sidelines uh, to see what happens. And what is that? What, what do you anticipate this to do? Let's say we come out of this in a month and, and things sort of start to return to normal or two months or three months, God forbid, it continues on past that. What do you anticipate things happening from a business valuation perspective? Because that has to impact valuations either positively or negatively. Yeah, we, we, they've already started to talk about that. And uh, we've talked to a couple of SBA lenders about how the SBA is going to uh, look at this uh, first quarter. Obviously, we were almost done with the first quarter before this really hit. Um, and so, uh, of course, the end of March, uh, a, a big portion of March has been affected by that second quarter. Uh, is going to be devastating. I think uh, at least April, if not uh, a good portion of May too, until things are, people are out and about again. And then, um, you know, again, there's going to be some sort of hangover to this thing. So I think what's, what, what the SBA lenders and people have already had a discussion about was ignoring the first and second quarter uh, looking to current financials in the third and fourth quarter of this year, and then normalizing through the last three years and trying to come up with a value. Uh, we've seen that in the past. Uh, and we've been, you know, 9-11, hurricanes, uh, you know, uh, obviously uh, the economic downturn 
did affect valuations for several years. Uh, but, and, and nobody really looked back to 2007 and 2008 to value a business. Uh, but this one, you know, a lot of the smart money and you see reports from, you know, investment houses and things like that, that feel like the second quarter, the, the first quarter GDP is going to be down. Second quarter is going to be a record down uh, quarter in GDP. And they're talking about the third and fourth quarter being record up quarters in GDP. So everybody's kind of looking at this kind of bounce back pretty quick. Now, there's going to be casualties throughout uh, the business landscape uh, that, you know, are going to have to be absorbed. Sure. And, and it's exciting to hear that you're hearing at least from other industry experts that they are expecting kind of rec record ups in, in the third and fourth quarter because it's exciting to hear. I mean, like nobody, you know, nobody wants to hear doom and gloom. I mean, you know, everybody's concerned and, and obviously it doesn't make you feel better if you own a restaurant or are in travel. If you own a travel agency right now, hearing that third and fourth quarter will be fantastic when you don't know if you're going to have a business in three months kind of thing. But it's exciting to know from the overall business landscape that things are looking up. Talk to me about more than just the economic forecast, the climate, in talking to your clients and your staff, because obviously you have a lot of business brokers working with you. What is the, the, the psychology of people right now? What is their, how, are they feeling optimistic? Are they feeling pessimistic? Are they somewhere in the middle? Where are they at? Well, I think it goes across the board. You know, uh, I think a lot of people are being you know, trying to be optimistic and trying to people are trying to be make the best of it. I mean, you know, uh, we're all out there on social media trying to uh, make people happy. We're having uh, we had my daughter's birthday the other night. We had a virtual uh, party where we all blew out the candles and 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 it was kind of unique because we had family members that attended that definitely couldn't have attended their her normal you know, candle, uh, sort of ceremony on the cake. And so, uh, by the way, I also, so I, I, I enjoyed the rendition of her, uh, uh, the Atlanta tour set, you know, um, song was pretty great. Yeah. So we're trying to, you know, keep it positive and light. And, you know, what I always say, listen, there's a reality going on out there and, uh, you know, in the medical community and in, you know, the, the nonprofit community that, is is somewhat out of my control. Uh, you know, certainly I've been involved with nonprofits, but in the medical community, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a first responder, I'm not someone who works in in the in the hospitals. So all I can do is work on what I can control, and I could work on my company, and I could work with my clients in the small business community and say, hey, listen, I think help is on the way. We're talking about the big bailout that should be out, uh, hopefully in the next day or two. I think that will put money into the system, into people's pockets, kind of take us over that bridge where we need to get to, which is probably a good 30 to 60, 90 days away. I don't think anybody thinks we'll be back in business by, uh, by Easter. But, you know, I think it's going to be May or June where, uh, you know, we'll get back to the majority of our business. And hopefully in between then, we're, we've given uh, the, you know, the healthcare system enough of a buffer by doing the right thing by staying home and giving them enough time to kind of be ready and 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 for this to dissipate right so then the next kind of question i have for you is how much will the future be changed when things start to normalize and and people start getting out and about that now people are more comfortable working from home i mean like the, the idea of you know it was already kind of happening over years but now like people are realizing it's not that bad. How much do you think that's going to be impacted moving forward? Well, I think, you know, we were going there anyway, uh, but this is going to make a huge leap uh, into it. I mean, uh, you know, like we, we could always look back on ways that we ran our businesses. And, uh, you know, I have to say that I, you know, I feel like I'm in a good spot because I went through 2008, 2009, 2010, and I've been very conservative about the way I've run my business and I'm in decent financial shape to weather this. And I'm thankful for that. And so, you know, listen, I'm not sure anybody's going to ever shake hands again, I, 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 you know, and kiddingly, but it's going to change norms in the way we deal with this. You know, uh, I've seen reports that, that, you know, this coronavirus could be a seasonal thing. Uh, you know, I think we're all going to uh, really kind of act in, and work differently. I think the workplace will be a little bit different the way we keep it clean and the way we interact. 
it'll be interesting. You know, the, you think about the, about the big phone rooms. Will there ever be a phone room where everybody's kind of shoulder to shoulder again? Is that going to be, you know, allowed with, by OSHA? Who knows? Uh, and I think the ripples go even further. I mean, simply how many businesses are going to support the idea of working remotely and reduce your overhead from a kind of retail retail obviously you can't change but rather but when you're talking about you know professional services you yeah know. listen i have i have some big offices and i can argue that 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 really helps us uh but you know business brokers have been working from home for years and we've seen a down uh, you know a, a kind of a, a a lowering of uh how many people come into the office over the last several years and I think that's going to continue. We, you know, it's funny during the uh, economic downturn and when gas uh, went up to $4 a gallon, uh, everybody was having sticker shock about driving into the office and having in-person meetings. And so we started, uh, you know, quote unquote, Zoom meetings back then. Uh, we, I forgot what tool we were using, go to meetings. Uh, but uh, as the technology has gotten better, less and less people come into the office. And yeah, I think that's going to continue. I, I really do. Uh, uh, and, and so it's not a bad thing necessarily, right? Well, if you own office space, it's a bad thing. But, uh, but, but beyond that, no, it's, it's, I think it's a very good thing, especially if you can be as productive and you can keep morale at a higher level. Although I think collaboration is always pretty important anyway. Um, so I think that you're right about having the larger office space and having that being a value add to whatever it is you're doing. Um, I, I've been to your, your, your conference room, your training room many times. And I think that's it's fantastic, especially when you're able to kind of, you know, you, don't, you lose the energy, I think, whenever you do remote. Um, obviously, over the last couple of weeks, we've done exclusively everything remotely. The energy isn't the same, but there's advantages to, to, to it, certainly. You can't deny the fact that it's kind of great going, not having to wear pants to work kind of thing. Yeah, no, it's, it, it is nice. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it's nice to be home too, but I, I think it's nice to get out of the house as well. I, I listen, you, you were talking about before what's going to happen after this and, you know, sure. Restaurants are not going to be able to, I think the restaurants will be packed by the way, but they're not going to be able to gain ground. But you think about the airlines and, and, and resorts and think, just think about how many people are wanting to have a summer vacation now and are just, you know, you know, run out there and do it. And, you know, of course, people be in a different financial situation, some of them. And, and so I think some of those, some of those, uh, some of those industries will catch up. But hey, listen, imagine this going on right now, if we didn't have Zoom, and we didn't have Slack, and we didn't have Trello, and we didn't have Teams, and we didn't have you know, really a, a much better system than we did 10 years ago in the 2009, 2010, if we wanted to try to work from home. Uh, it's, a, it's a different ball game these days. And, you know, we're, I'm thankful that this technology is here. For sure. And take that a step further. If this had happened 10 years ago when we were still barely, still kind of barely getting out of the, 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 the economic down cycle. Uh, I mean, the fact, that, the fact that the market was so good and the economy was so good that people were in a better position to weather this. And this happened when people were still kind of reeling a little bit from what had been taking place during, during you know, the last sort of, you know, market correction crash, whatever you want to call it. Um, that would have sucked. I mean, so I'm yeah. really appreciative, not just from a technology perspective, but from the state of the economy, that we're in such a good position to be able to weather this stuff. Yeah, I, you know, listen, you know, they said it this morning and it was kind of unprecedented that the Fed chair was on uh, the news and they were talking about that was the first time the Fed chair has been on the news uh, on NBC ever. So, uh, you know, the Fed chair uh, being out there talking about that, you know, the e economically, we were a very sound in a very sound place and we should be able to get to that. Yeah, and I truly believe there's going to be somewhat of a hangover. Yes, there's going to be empty stores and there's going to be uh, some losers in this that couldn't hang on and uh, people might change their habits again. You have to think about during the economic downturn, what happened to the quick serve restaurants, the QSRs, where, you know, uh, those became very popular and the white tablecloth. And I don't know if the, you know, certainly there's some really nice white tablecloth, but it's certainly not the norm anymore. You know, it's more those uh, quick, and you know, you might see a pushback again, you know, where these white tablecloth restaurants are not as popular. Yeah. And I think that you also saw the, on, on, on the kind of quick serve restaurant kind of model, you saw an increase on like sort of premium 
quick serve restaurants and and like higher end as opposed to your lower end to where it was a couple dollars more but but when the economy was good everyone sort of supported and thought it was great is right. that going to be the case anymore when that three extra dollars for your meal or whatever that looks like uh, maybe we're gonna not do that yeah well america is uh loves to spend their money we're a consumer uh sure. society uh, they put 1200 bucks in everybody's pocket. Uh, you know, by the end of May, that 1200 bucks will be gone. Uh, and, and I'm not making light of the $1,200. I mean, there are people that are definite. Uh, you know, one of the things that the United Way, uh, sitting on the United Way board, we have almost 50% of our county in the Alice kind of, which is basically is they are paycheck to paycheck. And that's a huge amount of people that can't afford this. So that $1,200 is literally going to save them, save them from, you know, paying the rents and food and all those kind of things. You think all the kids that are in school and what the schools are doing just to try to feed those kids, because that's, um, you know, that's the, you know, one meal that they have a, a day. And uh, if you, if you have a chance, if everybody has a chance, Udonis Haslam wrote a great article that I, I sent out, but is on the Player Tribune. And Udonis is from, uh, you know, Liberty City in Miami, if you don't know Liberty City. Uh, let's put it this way. He said he never saw Miami Beach till he was a, a rookie in the NBA. Uh, you know, he never saw South Beach until he was a rookie in the NBA, and he lived across the bridge. And so to his talk about hunger and his talk about being poor, uh, you know, just hits home the, for this crisis. It, 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 was, it was really heartfelt. I thought what he well, – it was wonderful. So – um, and I'd seen it not through, but you, you would share, but I'd seen it in other kind of channels. And it was really pretty wonderful. So I'm glad, I'm glad he penned it. I'm glad that it's getting the viral attention that it should. Yeah. So, and, and, and you're right, certainly the, 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 the people that are living paycheck to paycheck, the 50% that are struggling, that are, are doing okay, they've got a home, we don't kind of, we sometimes forget about that and, and how much this will truly impact them. So let's pivot a little bit and talk to about the philanthropic world and the charities that are out there like life now like united way that are are being impacted and and how they're being impacted and what are you seeing on your end you can talk about both united way but also talk about some of the other charities that you're involved with yeah i mean listen lifenet you know we're talking about lifenet that has a daily meal where we had a a community kitchen where you know 50 60 people would be in at any one time they're not letting that they close the kitchen you know, and we're feeding outside and we're feeding box meals and we're not using our silverware and plates. And we're, we, we basically told all the volunteers to go home for their own safety. So just think about that model change where we, you know, we go from having volunteers and, and we're, we're, we're also have, a, you know, a kind of triage kind of situation in our lobby where we're helping people with food stamps, where we're helping people get their mail in, and all that kind of stuff has ended now. And all, the only reason we're letting people in the building is to get a shower. So it's really kind of ratcheted down to the to the basics out there. And these are people that are unsheltered. But then there's the mobile food pantry, uh, and there's tons of people that you know the the people that can't make it from paycheck to paycheck, the retirees, the people who are disabled. And I've seen a lot of other charities kind of stepping forward. Uh, United Way has gotten uh, has started a fund uh, to help these get those people money, those Alice level folks. Uh, and and I, I wish I, I knew the acronym for Alice. But I can't quite think of it right now. But um, uh, and some big companies have stepped forward. Uh, JM Family gave um, half a million dollars. Uh, and, you know, God bless JM family for what they do in our community and so many other, some of the banks, uh, and I, I, I don't want to start rattling off uh, who they yeah, were. But and then you'll get in trouble. Yeah, I'll get in trouble for trouble. forgetting someone, but so uh, def definitely the lead gift was uh, JM family and uh, other people have stepped forward. And, and listen, this is going to take a huge effort by the nonprofit community to help those people. Listen, even we talk about, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, people in the community, uh, other charities, uh, you know, that I can think of like the Hispanic unity and a lot of people that help with tax returns. There's a, there's a credit every single year that people lose that people don't even apply for because they don't know. Can you imagine that 
these these benefits, these checks come out for $1,200. If you have an online, I heard it on the news, if you have an online account with, uh, the, uh, with the IRS, you'll get a direct deposit. Can you imagine how many people have that that are, that are really poor? They don't even know what, it, you know, some of these people don't have bank accounts. Some of these people have no idea how to apply for this money uh, or get the money. And so there's going to have to be a big movement to make sure that those people get the money. It's it's just a huge mobilization, and the SBA funding, and this disaster bailout is going to be available for nonprofits as well, which is which is wonderful because it's so needed. I mean, oftentimes we we serve on the board at LifeNet together, and the face of homelessness and hunger is not what we oftentimes think, and. It's not where these people are lazy, that classic sort of mentality of, oh, they, well, they deserved it. Yeah. Um, there are some, and I'm not trying to say that, that doesn't exist, but that's not the majority. The majority no. is just- No, just listen, there's some people that were trying to house with the Broward Ends homelessness and, uh, and you know, United We End the Homelessness and that whole coalition that came together here in Broward County and we put about 200, 300 people into permanent housing. Uh, but there are a cadre of people, a percentage of people that don't want to be housed, refuse services. Again, a lot of times mental illness uh, and they just refuse to, you know, and, and yes, they want to game the system or whatever. I you know, it's just, I don't know if anybody really wants to be on the street, but there are people that choose to be there uh, and because of their situation, perhaps they're, they just can't mentally get there. And, you know, we talk, we deal, we do deal with them at LifeNet. Um, but there's a huge portion of people that we give daily, um, not weekly food boxes to and, and mobile pantry items uh, that are, again, retired, uh, just can't make it pay to paycheck to paycheck, uh, you know, and just think about all those people now, uh, highest, you know, jo- highest unemployment of uh, you know, percentage uh, ever just coming this month, uh, it's going to be uh, crushing. And, you know, and so, you know, a trillion dollars may not do it, uh, but, you know, it'll certainly help. I hope a lot of those, I hope we can, we can really kind of get back and give those people jobs again. Uh, I think uh, it'll take a while, uh, but I think uh, the, the economy will return pretty quickly for, for most, and there's going to have to be this gap. You know, it's like it's like after a hurricane. I mean, there's probably still people up in the Panhandle and Hurricane Michael that have been you know negatively affected. I think there's some people that are still affected by Hurricane. Um, I forget which was the last one that came through here. You know, there's 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 people that lost their housing that just never could get a leg up, uh, and there's going to be that that, that percentage of people that you know, nonprofit, we're all going to have to come together. And, and, and that's one of my bigger fears about what's happening from, from the economy perspective. The economy will be better. Like this will end. I mean, I'm sure of this. This isn't like being an optimist or real. This is the reality. If you look at the economic cycle, it always gets better. Okay. This is a buying opportunity. If you kind of look at yeah, it from that kind of perspective. That. No, we've it, said that. Huh? No, we've said that. I mean, you know, how many times after the economic downturn, after the dot-com uh, crash, after 9-11, oh, I wish I just would have bought Yahoo or we Google or Microsoft. I mean, we have the crystal ball. We know what's going to happen. We know it's going to get better. So my concern, though, is, is not the state of affairs for the average American or even the people that are struggling a little bit, but they're, they're getting by. They're struggling, but they're getting by. I'm not as worried about that because I know that will ultimately get better and it'll suck for a little bit because it will suck for a little bit, but it'll get better. It'll get better relatively quickly. I don't obviously have any timetable. That's it. What, what makes me concerned is how the nonprofits will be handled because that's dealing with that bottom three, 5%. Sure. And as people's stock portfolios dip, okay. And you look at the major donors, it goes from 29,000 to 19,000. Okay, and they, so they just lost 33% of their perceived net worth. Even if you don't, you know, you look at it from a long-term investment perspective, you still lost it from, from on, on, on paper. You just lost that much value to yourself. 
are you as comfortable giving the money to the posse? Yeah, the, the, the answer is absolutely not. You're absolutely, you're absolutely correct in the fact that even me, uh, who I consider myself a philanthropist, is not going to give a major dollars to anybody right now because I have a business that I am trying to figure out what the ramp rate is, right? I am trying to figure out what my burn rate is and when we quote unquote get back to normal. So, you know, we are definitely not going to be profitable for the next, at least the next month or two, probably three, four, five. I have to make sure that I have enough money to pay my employees the way I want to pay my employees. And I want to make sure that, you know, I have enough money at home to, con you know, continue to house and feed my family. So there's a huge amount of people. We had a deal crater the other day, uh, a deal where the, the, the buyers just said, hey, we lost a million dollars in the stock market. We just don't feel comfortable uh, putting this money at risk and buying this business. So yes, I mean, when people look at their 401, you know, they feel rich, right? They feel that they have, you know, whatever in the bank and they could say, okay, I can give this mon much money to charity. I'm making this much money this year. And if that is soft this year, yes, uh, we're, the, you know, nonprofits are going to struggle. Uh, some nonprofits are going to go out of business. Uh, and uh, we talked about that at the United Way. And, we, and we, we're trying to help uh, the, everybody, all those nonprofits as well. And, but, you know, there's going to be a shakeout. And, uh, and you know, hopefully, uh, you know, once things get realigned, uh, you know, we could continue to help all those people. And you're right, the nonprofits need help too. No, they absolutely need help because we'll take it a step further from what you had said as far as, you know, the stock markets, the perception of your 401k and feeling a little bit more comfortable saying, okay, we can give this small business owners like myself. I, 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 I am philanthropic minded. I, I can't give as much as, as the cagnet is, but, 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 you know, I do give. Not much. And, <laughs> and, and, and but so, so what I'll say is, but I'm also looking at the same thing. I, I've got staff. I've got to pay them. I've got to make sure that my family. So I'm not even looking at, you know, what's in the market. I'm not worried about that. I've got time to build that part back up. Sure. I'm worried about the day to day. And if flying chimp isn't profitable, then there's not money to give. Like right. I, I even have the conversation with my wife goes, so like, hey, we need to be smart right now like like no frivolous stuff that's right. not to say that, that 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 it's a four long fire or anything but it's something to be mindful of and if everybody has that quarter step back one of the first places to cut would be giving and that's yeah i you know i think that's a reality i think uh you know the charities have to be uh you know ready for that and i think that's why you know uh I'll get out the list of the people that have given to this United Way fund to, to fund some of the charities out there, uh, some of the partners that we have uh, that are doing child services, that are doing food, that are doing, uh, you name it, mental health. I mean, all those, you know, and for those big companies, and, you know, it's the usual suspects, the banks, the banks, the, the Bank of America, the law firms. Uh, the, you know, the, again, the jam families, the auto nations, you're going to see those companies step forward and uh, give money. You've seen some of the big philanthropists in the world give money like the Gates Foundation and Warren Buffett. And I think what, and the Amazons, I think you'll see more of that as well. You know, the, the, this disaster is different than almost every, it's probably different than every other disaster we've ever seen. It's everywhere. You know, it's, everybody's in the same boat. So I would tell people that are in a crunch uh, out there in the world and even companies that are in the crunch, you know, your landlord's in the same place. Um, your landlord doesn't want your business right now. You know, the bank's in the same place. The bank doesn't want your business right now. The SBA is in the same place. They don't want your business right now. And same thing that, you know, I already think there's a moratorium on uh, evictions uh, in some counties, uh, it's certainly you're not going to get any judge to, uh, to, uh, you know, preside over a lawsuit right and now. Of are closed. So, I mean, like, it, yeah. it, well, they're trying to do some well, online hearings, know, and stuff, I, 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 but they're certainly not going to hear, uh, from someone that wants to foreclose on somebody's 
mortgage or somebody's rent. Uh, so, yeah, it, 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 it's an odd situation. But I guess the one thing I keep feeling the need to remind myself of and reminding everybody else that we have these conversations, because then you can kind of go down this kind of cycle of, but, 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 oh my gosh, we've gone through nothing like this ever before, obviously. I mean, this right. is unprecedented in, 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 in certainly our lifetimes. 1918, I suppose, I mean, is the closest. But, yeah, but there's, 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 no, there's no wisdom attached to handle how to handle this. There's no book on how to handle, you know, a, a, a pandemic. What I would say is, it's going to get better. We know that it's going to get better. Like, like our country isn't going to fall apart. The world isn't going to fall apart because of this. It simply will happen. And so as long as we remain mindful of that, and it doesn't necessarily make, make the day-to-day -day easier, but as long as we kind of keep our eye on that big picture, and I kind of am just reminded that my wife's healthy, my, my, my son's healthy, and, and the rest of it doesn't really matter. Um, I, this is kind of how I keep reminding myself and looking at it when I have these conversations, um, both you know, in, in an interview format, but also just with friends and, and colleagues and clients and so on and so forth. It's, it's gonna get better. And it's not gonna take as long, I think, as most of the other situations because it didn't happen because of mismanagement or mistakes. It happened because of the most black swan event ever. Yeah, you're I, absolutely I, I, right. right. I mean, like you said, this is this is a this is not even a sucker's bet. This is like a sure thing. Like if you bet on the stock market at its bottom, it's going to go up. And you know, listen, if I had like a, the the only the only thing we all don't know is when. So the problem is, is we're all trying to gauge, even if we had dry powder, like a bunch of cash sitting on the sidelines, or we had equity in our houses, which we were able to cash in and just put it in the stock market. We want to know when, is it three months? Is it six months? Is it, you know, so, so I think as soon as that peak hits and it's certainly not hit yet. And again, horrible things happening in the, in the, in the medical community. And I, I pray for everyone. Um, as soon as that peak starts to hit and those number of cases start to come down, you're going to see the stock market explode. I mean, it was up today already, but you're going to see it explode. And here's what I hope happens um, as well. If it turns around quickly and if every American uh, that made less than $99,000 gets 1200 bucks or businesses get a bunch of money uh, from this, uh, from this and they get money and they come in and this thing does turn around quicker than everybody thinks, please everybody. We already talked about it. If they were gonna give $1,200 to every single person in the United States, no matter who you are, we were gonna tell everybody, you, know, you don't refuse the money, take the money and give it to the you know, United Way, LifeNet, whatever. Uh, you know, we, I hope that people are super generous after this and I'll even throw one more in. All of you out there with a year's worth of toilet paper and a year's worth of tuna and a year's worth of peanut butter, you know, I'm going to come knocking on your door after this is all done. And let's try to feed those hungry people for the next year because they were hungry before, like, it, like Udonis was saying. Right. And they were hungry before. And I, I, would, I would add to your, to your list, if you can give to charity, fantastic. At the very least, go out to eat or do take out rather obviously don't have to eat now but do take out you know one one thing that we've sort of embraced in my house is we're going to do take out three days a week no matter what like that's just on the list and we were never a takeout family ever like we was just not something we ever did i know a lot of families right. are we just didn't do that that was never part of the caustic family but it's the little things that we can do to help keep money in motion yeah, we're, t we're trying to, I mean, we ordered out to a couple of restaurants recently and we're trying to keep that in motion as well, especially our favorite restaurants that we like. And, and we, we're trying to support our friends. Uh, you know, I got a call from a restaurant tour as we're on the phone here. I'll call them back in a few minutes. Uh, but, you know, they're hurting. I mean, they're not built, again, to be a, a takeout place. I mean, they're, they're paying huge amount of rent because they that are able to charge money when people come in and drink and things like that. And takeout just doesn't do it. So, and, and, and you don't get the drinks orders in those situations, which is where the money is. The money's not the food. Uh, yeah. And it's already a low margin business to begin with. So, but 
put the money in motion, put it into your local community, whether it's charity, whether it's local businesses that you know are hurting. I mean, the hospitality industry in general is a good place to be able to put that money in to kind of keep it flowing. Um, yep. So thank you so much for your time today. No so, so spend 30 seconds, 20 seconds talking about Transworld and, 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 and a plug, little, little plug for yourself. Yeah, so, you know, Trans World Business Advisors, we help people buy and sell and franchise their business. Uh, we would love to, you know, talk. We, we, we just want to be a resource for people. We always have been. We're willing to talk to you years before you want to sell your business. Uh, we are here, again, to try to help people through this process. We're going to get out as much information. We're very active out there in the world. So uh, look us up, Trans World Business Advisors. We have offices all around. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I'll throw out that we have an annual pasta dinner that thank God we got done on, um, on February 9th, I believe it was 16th, 16th, 16th. 16th. I, I, they, they're all starting to get together these dates. Cause I was looking back on some of the dates that we had and we did have some in March in the past. And so, you know, we raised $265,000 for life net for families and, and we had a thousand people there and it was just starting people talking about the coronavirus, uh, believe it or not, back then. And um, people worried about people traveling from China. Uh, but, you know, all those, all those events out there are now wiped out. So we will have another pasta dinner. It will probably be in February of next year. I, I already heard dates of uh, because of when the Super Bowl lands and then the next week happens to be... Uh, 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 Valentine's Day. And so it's going to be like the third or fourth week in February. Come out. It's a great time for families. And uh, we, we do that on an everyday basis. And, I, and I'll echo what, what Jeff has been talking about. If you can give the nonprofit, please take some of your money right now and deploy it. Uh, they're all working on behalf of, of those out there who are less fortunate than us. We're I'm very lucky to be in a house that I don't mind being cooped up in, but that's not the case for everybody. So, um, you know, and, and I'll just also take it one more step is, listen, everybody, like Jeff says, this is going to end. It's going to get better in the process. Let's be nice to each other. Let's be respectful. Stay home. Let's, let's lessen the blow out there to our healthcare system and certainly those who our immunocompromised and our elderly. That's why we're doing this. We're doing an investment in them. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud of everybody for doing that. Yeah, absolutely. And do your part. And I, I think be, being a part of the community is, or being the community is really a better way of thinking about it is, you know, that's, we're all in this together, uh, you know, yes, we and, are. We, and we need to rely on everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, everybody, this has been Andy Cagnetta. Um, Ultimately, we're going to do another one of these at some point. Maybe, Andy, you join us again when in, in slightly better times. We're not talking about doom and gloom. Yeah, sure. We can talk about fun things, right? So, everybody, have a wonderful day. Be kind, be safe, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks, Jeff.